All right, it looks like we're live. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I can see the, the diehards here. After all the parties, you're still able to, to get up in time to make a nine o'clock uh, talk. So thank you for that, I appreciate it. My name is John Mark Walker. I'm the uh, Manage IQ community leader. And with me is Chris Wells. And Chris, what do you do? Uh, I work at uh, Red Hat managing uh, product marketing teams in our cloud management business unit. Excellent. And so today we're going to talk to you about open hybrid clouds and managing hybrid clouds, and specifically how you use Manage IQ to help manage uh, hybrid clouds uh, throughout your infrastructure, including OpenStack, uh, but not just OpenStack. Uh, how many of you are here because you heard the Manage IQ announcement earlier this week? All right, a few. How many of you know about the Manage IQ announcement earlier this week? All right, cool. So, uh, so yes, as you may have heard, we're, we've announced uh, the name of the project, what we're doing with it, and I'll get into all that uh, later. Uh, but first, we kind of want to set the tone uh, for what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, the first thing is about hybrid clouds in general. Just a really simple question. Uh, do you want hybrid clouds? The answer is pretty clear. The market is very clear in, in which way it prefers there. It, there's a very clear preference for uh, hybrid cloud technology, the ability to manage multiple clouds, to integrate them into a single pane of glass, to manage them together side by side, to do workload management, all those things that we think of uh, when we think of you know, hybrid clouds or, or clouds in general. Uh, but that's a simple question. The, the more detailed question is, you know, what's the number one problem that you're facing that you want clouds to solve? And a, the resounding answer here, and the, you can see what this chart is, it's a uh, summary of what's your top problem, number one, two, and three, when you list all three. And the interesting thing about this chart is, for all of those, number one, two, and three, it's management. Management is the, the sore point when you talk about uh, clouds and what you're doing in the clouds. Um, you can see several others there as well that, that pop up. Certainly security uh, is, is up there. Uh, how do you manage cloud security? Uh, it's still, frankly, kind of an open question. It's something that is still being addressed. It's something that we're dealing with uh, as we go along. Um, some of these you'll see are, are software problems. Some of these are not software problems, and so when you when you really think about it, we've, we've helped to isolate here the ones that can actually be controlled, the ones that can actually do something with software. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think software can do anything about culture. If, you're, if you have to solve a culture problem in your organization, we're probably not going to be able to address it. But you can see the ones we've highlighted. Like uh, when you talk about management and operational processes, it's about you know, how do you automate provisioning? How do you make a self-service portal? Uh, how do you deliver services? Uh, when you think about you know, the financials, how do you find out how much you're being charged or how much are you charging? How much do you know uh, about your capacity is being, uh, how much of your capacity is being utilized and by whom and where? Um, all of these things are, are questions that have to be addressed and can be addressed through software uh, through a little work. And that's what we're going to talk about, how uh, Manage IQ fits into uh, that, that hole. Um, when you think about what is a cloud encompass. Uh, you think of the, the usual things. When, I think back in the day when uh, Dave Nielsen came up with his four, uh, four parts of a, of a cloud, there was certainly a self-service bit. When I'm going to provision something, when I'm going to create a service, I should be able to do it in a point-and-click way. I should be able to uh, do it myself without the aid of you know, needing some admin on the back end to manually do it for me. Um, I should be able to determine where my workloads are being uh, deployed and managed. I should be able to determine who's using what and how much they're being charged. I should be able to put a sort of meter on the different services that are being used. I should be able to limit uh, how much of each service is being used and institute quotas for you know, uh, compute and RAM and storage. Uh, I should be able to broker between multiple cloud platforms. I should be able to uh, burst to a separate cloud when the capacity utilization reaches a point where I can no longer uh, fully service uh, what is needed at any given time. So the, and I should be able to leverage you know, what I already have as opposed to having to do greenfield deployments all the time. These are the things we think about when we think of open hybrid clouds or what people want to do with a the cloud. Uh, these, these, this, is what, um, this is kind of what, but the people don't always think about it. It's something that, it's, it's a, there, there are gaps in the market here that with an open source platform we're trying to address. And these are sort of the questions we want to answer uh, with Manage IQ. So when you think of you know, this, the, the typical self-service model, when, you, when a user is, or a super user 
because we're thinking of both the, the ad administrator as well as the, the end user. When they're presented with, well, I want to deploy a service in a cloud platform, you're faced with all these different choices. Uh, ideally, you, know, you could just have like a single pane of glass, but what usually happens is, well, I've got this thing and I want to do X. I want to do, I have X, I want to do, I want to do it uh, in place Y. Uh, well, how do you determine which platform you deployed on? How do you determine which is the best to suit your needs at any given time? Uh, how do you know what the latency is going to be on your application uh, de if deployed on you know, AWS versus your, uh, some OpenStack-based cloud? And furthermore, once you do deploy on one of those, uh, how do you manage the application that you've deployed? How do you manage the service? Uh, can you actually utilize all the different management platforms to give you kind of a holistic view? And the answer usually is, each cloud platform also has its own management interface. And you have to look at them in siloed arrangements. You can't view them at once to give you a holistic view. You're depending on each platform to give you its specific interface. And this is what I would call suboptimal. And if you're a user or administrator and you're facing this task, it's kind of uh, beyond the scope of you know, what you want to do or what you can do. And it makes, it makes cloud management a whole lot more manual than it really should be. Because the whole point of clouds is to be self-service, to be uh, automated, to be orchestrated. And when you're dealing with individual platforms, there's simply no way to do that. This is to say nothing of each individual cloud platform, because they all bring uh, certain features to the market that are great, and they're highly used, and, and they're wonderful. But when you think of it in terms of the broader context, that's when you start running into problems. And the siloed arrangement here is something that uh, probably needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. So let's think about what people would like to see when they're presented with the problem of uh, cloud services or services deployed on cloud platforms. When you think of it, when, when, when someone mentally pictures what they're doing in the cloud, what they really want is to be able to go through uh, from the beginning and say, you know, I want to deploy this service. And there should be some logic that determines where that service goes and, and how it's managed. Um, you know, obviously, there has to be some way to determine you know, who can do what. You know, so you need some sort of role-based uh, access control to be able to delegate, uh, uh, to be able to delegate to different users, to be able to do a, a self-service portal that doesn't where the user, end user doesn't necessarily know what happens on the back end, so to make it seamless, a seamless transaction. And there should be some sort of you know, service catalog or portal that the user can go to, point click, and say, make it go, and then they don't care what happens to it after that. That's what people think of when they, when they think of, well, I want to use the cloud. And this is, when you can see here, I have the, uh, the Manage IQ uh, logo here, because that's kind of what it's designed to do, to give you that holistic view, to give you that single point of interface uh, into the cloud management backends. And so when you look at this holistically, and you look at what Manage IQ brings to the table, you know, there are all these sort of cloud enablement pieces, the services that people think of with cloud management, like uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ability to do compliance management, the ability to do the self-service portal, all these good things that you think of with cloud management uh, and chargebacks and quota management. But there has to be a way to integrate that with the infrastructure uh, services below. It's not just the cloud services that you're managing. It's the infrastructure you have to be able to allocate and manage along with that. It's, it's a total systems manage, management, management picture. And what we're saying here is that the cloud services management has to be integrated with the holistic you know, systems management piece. It's not separate from, it's integrated with you know, the infrastructure that you have already. So one of the things that we've seen this week at the, the conference, I think is a pretty consistent theme, is this rise of the super user. And what we've seen, you know, from our perspective, and you know, I talked to a lot of organizations and customers over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of focus on how do you take and actually build out the cloud infrastructure. And, you know, a lot of people will start with the self-service portal. They'll start with the underlying virtualization. How do you put the infrastructure together? And one of the things I've noticed this week, you know, at the conference, talking to different you know, customers and organizations, you know, people are now actually starting to take OpenStack. They're starting to take their cloud uh, infrastructure platforms. They're actually starting to put them into production. It's not just lab cases anymore, it's not just pilot projects, they're really starting to put into production. And now what they're finding is they have to kind of transition in the organization and we see this rise of the super user, this rise of someone who's really responsible for that ongoing management, that ongoing IT operations of it. And in order to be effective in their job, they really need to be able to do two things on, these, on this plane of management. 
here at the top of the screen, they've got to be able to provide these cloud-like capabilities, not just things like self-service and compliance that John Mark talked about and the charge back and the quota enhancement, but they also have to be able to manage effectively the underlying infrastructure across multiple different cloud platforms to be able to do the resource management, the capacity planning. And what you'll see we're going to talk about here with Manage IQ is by open sourcing that we're really bringing a cloud management platform that is completely open sourced across multiple, managing across multiple different types of infrastructure to really help with these two different planes, to bring cloud capabilities across the top, but also being able to effectively and efficiently managing the resources across the bottom. So let's look back again at the, the self-service portal uh, uh, characterization and look at it in a bit more detail and, and go behind just the interface and look at what's going into it. Uh, in order to be able to do the intelligent provisioning and management, you have to have a really good uh, role-based access control mechanism in front so you can control who's, uh, who has the privileges to do a specific service. Uh, you have to have uh, quotas so that you don't have a couple of users dominating the existing resources and making uh, things sluggish for everyone else. Uh, you have to be able to have some sort of approval workflow so that you, you can manage uh, which resources are being allocated at any given time. Uh, and then you have to be able to determine where the workloads are being deployed, doing the whole workload management and capacity management piece uh, in one on the back end. And you can see the way, uh, so th this is the way it should work. And this is this sort of functionality that Manage IQ gives you. Uh, this is what we allow you to do uh, on the back end. So you can see sort of in a level of detail what a self-service portal actually means and what actually goes into it. Um, it's not as simple as uh, people, well, the end user should think it's simple, but there's a whole lot of logic that goes in the back end that you shouldn't see because it should be seamless. And so now we see the whole, the whole cloud service uh, life cycle. It's not just about deployment. When you look at what we've been able to do with OpenStack thus far over the last four years, it's been all about uh, deployment, building new services, it's about maybe uh, administration, but there hasn't been a focus on the whole management lifecycle piece, the whole cloud services uh, lifecycle. When you look at the whole picture from the provisioning to uh, delegation and role-based access to the optimization according to uh, performance to uh, scaling when you need it and the whole capacity management piece uh, to end of lifing services uh, in a way that doesn't uh, push, that doesn't, uh, uh, that doesn't interrupt service delivery. Uh, when you look at the whole picture, we're kind of venturing into new territory here with an open source manage IQ. And this is, this, is what, this is the picture that we want people to think about when you're going to be managing multiple cloud platforms. So let's look at where we are with respect to OpenStack and, and what this means in an OpenStack world. How does manage IQ uh, fit into the picture of, of OpenStack? If you look at the breakdown of the typical uh, OpenStack uh, project or with all the different projects that comprise OpenStack, you can see a variety of pieces that have been developed over time kind of in their own individual spheres uh, with a little bit of uh, management administration on top of it in the form of Horizon. When you look at the authentication management and Keystone, uh, it, it's, it's really good at providing authentication services for uh, OpenStack uh, users and, and for different uh, and OpenStack management. But what about for you know, other services you have running on other platforms? When you look at uh, the Ryzen dashboard, what is it really giving you? It's giving you a, a, a look at various metrics that make up your, your OpenStack deployment, but it's not in the context of you know, the broader infrastructure. And so when you look at the digital pieces of OpenStack, you know, is there a cohesive whole? Where is the orchestration? Where is the lifecycle management? Where is the, the broader picture? And that's kind of what we're aiming to fill uh, with the Manage IQ release. And so when you look at the broader topology, the broader taxonomy for cloud management, uh, we want you to think of the whole picture. We want you to think of uh, virtualization management is a very important piece of it, obviously, and you'll see that isolated at the uh, bottom left. But what about the pieces above that? What about everything else that we think of in terms of cloud management? Uh, this, this graphic is a courtesy of our friends at Gartner. Uh, and they sort of uh, highlight in yellow here the pieces that uh, make up cloud management, uh, cloud management platforms. And self-service provisioning is at the top, but there's a whole lot of other things uh, going on uh, in addition to that. When you think of chargebacks, when you think of chargeback management, when you think of capacity management, 
when you think of uh, role-based access, when you think of all the different ways, the orchestration layers that you need to, to manage everything from a, from a bird's eye view, to be able to give you the single pane of glass view into your infrastructure. And that's really what we're driving at here is you really need to see about the entire infrastructure, um, not just one specific cloud platform, but how does it work in context with everything else? I mean, typically a lot of the organizations that I'll talk to, when I ask them, you know, they, they're interested in building a private cloud, they want to get that agility, uh, they want to get that, those, that self-service and in, innovation into their organization. They don't look at it as, they look at their cloud as having all these characteristics. So it's not just the underlying you know, virtualization infrastructure, it's not just the self-service portal, but it's everything that has to go around that. Especially when I talk to people on the IT operations side, they want to make sure that they have the necessary controls in place for that private cloud so they can manage that capacity, they can offer chargeback capabilities, be able to manage performance and all those kind of things. So what, one of the things that we've seen at from the, you know, the Red Hat perspective and when we did the, you know, the acquisition of Manage IQ is we realized if someone really wants to build out a private cloud, they need this entire stack. They need not just the underlying infrastructure, but they need all the management layers that go on top of that to really be effective and be efficient uh, with their private cloud operations. You know, I spoke with uh, two different people this week that kind of illustrated the whole problem, uh, one of whom has uh, multiple OpenStack deployments in-house, and they have no easy way to orchestrate between multiple deployments of multiple versions of OpenStack. And so they're looking for an easy way, easier way to do that. And so when I told him about Manage IQ, his eyes lit up because that's exactly the sort of thing they want. Um, another gentleman was, was talking about... Uh, uh, migrating from one version of OpenStack to the more recent uh, Icehouse release and finding that it requires a lot of uh, uh, manual intervention to make that happen. And wouldn't it be great if he had so he could just add in the logic that allowed him to migrate services without disrupting existing services? And that's kind of that sort of shows you where the uh, the gaps are that we're we're trying to fill. Um, when you look at what we're trying to do, we're really just augmenting and extending what OpenStack can do. Um, OpenStack is a great, wonderful cloud platform. Uh, I've been very excited to watch the growth of the OpenStack community over the last four years. Uh, I was very excited when uh, Rackspace and NASA came together to, to start this community. And it's been wonderful to see it grow. You know, I was, I was there a couple of years ago, uh, three years ago in Boston when I think there were less than 1,000 people there in attendance, and to see it now grow to about 5,000, it's been great. And so I think we're now at the point where we can think about growing functionality to include uh, other things, to go up a level, to push things up a notch. And so when you look at the, the cloud, uh, when you look at the managed IQ, uh, I guess, uh, architecture, you could say, uh, this is the, these are the pieces that you know, we bring to the table, the pieces of automation and management that you know, we want you to think about uh, for, for what Managed IQ does. You know, when you look at cloud governance, we look at the ability to add policies and rule-based mechanisms to uh, automatically allocate services where they need to be. When you think of the automation orchestration piece uh, so that you can uh, go across you know, multiple platforms with different services. When you think about financial management and the ability to tie into your financial resources, the ability to tie into the, the chargeback mechanisms and that sort of management piece when you look at the ability to manage what services you deploy, when you talk about the, the storage management on the, on the back end, when you think of instrumentation so that you can uh, tie into whatever metrics and uh, monitoring pieces you have on the back end. Uh, you know, in, in a minute, we'll, they're, they're, we, we have the ability to tie into Solometer for that particular example. Uh, and then you talk about uh, resource management, capacity management. Do you, have, uh, do you have the ability, do you have the resources currently to allocate for this particular service, and if not, can you shift it somewhere else to do the workload management piece? This is sort of like the holistic view of Manage IQ and, and where we fit into the picture. Yes, I mean, Manage IQ functions really as an, an abstraction layer on top of all the various infrastructure providers in your environment, so it truly is hybrid, both hybrid across different types of hypervisors and virtualization platforms, as well as public cloud providers like an Amazon. But let's talk specifically about the OpenStack example since we're, we're here at the summit. Oh yes, OpenStack. That. Uh, as you mentioned, we, we're really about abstracting above the tooling uh, so that you're not tied to a specific platform. And so if you look at OpenStack as an example, this, again, this is not an actual uh, technical slide. This is sort of, this is conceptual. It's uh, more architecture. Uh, I hate that word, but uh, so be it. Uh, but you can see in, the, in this instance how you can tie in cloud governance with the different 
OpenStack components so that you can uh, orchestrate at a higher level, elevate the uh, OpenStack piece to a higher level and lift it into a, a broader context. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the image service of, of Glance combined with uh, the, the, the uh, orchestration automation templates of Heat, uh, with the metrics of Solometer, well, that lets you define sort of a cloud governance model at the top, and you can manage that from a level above, and that lets you, that gives you a bird's eye view of not just what's going on underneath with OpenStack, but lets you orchestrate it as a whole and in context of uh, other platforms. And, and I think one of the important things to understand here with the Manage IQ platform, because it is level, it is at a higher level of abstraction, we're not trying to replace the components that are inside of OpenStack. That's not our intent at all. We know that there are some management components that go in at the OpenStack layer. That's not the intent of Manage IQ. Rather, it's really designed to be a complementary tool that we integrate with those different components. So for example, we can take metrics out of Solometer as an example and aggregate that up at a higher level, like in a chargeback model. I think if you go to the next slide, for example, sure. we talk about chargeback kind of things. We can take those metrics out of the underlying OpenStack system, put them into the financial models. So now if you decide you want to like have different levels of chargeback, you want to tier out your storage and you want to charge at a different level or you want to charge back to different divisions or organizations inside your uh, particular type of company, you can do that by pulling that information out of OpenStack as well as pulling it out of other providers such as uh, vSphere, or pulling it out of Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization or other kinds of places, but it's allowing you to put it into a higher level model. So I do want to be clear that we're not trying to replace what's going on at the OpenStack layer because there is a need for those individual kind of elemental types of management tools, but we want to be able to bring them in a higher level so you do have that single pane of glass across all the various clouds in your organization. Because definitely one of the things that we've seen this week at the conference, there definitely is that theme that it's, it's going to be a multiple hybrid cloud world. There's not going to be one cloud to rule them all. There will be different flavors, different types of infrastructure. And because you're going to have that, you have to have a way to bring all that stuff into one common management layer uh, to be able to have all the effective controls and to be able to be efficient around that. And that's the idea behind Manage IQ. You know, I think uh, you know, my employer, Red Hat, uh, has invested significantly in OpenStack. We want to see an OpenStack world. We want to see OpenStack grow and continue to flourish. But we also know that there are a whole lot of people that are going to be deploying, Red, uh, deploying OpenStack uh, within the context of, uh, uh, in conjunction with other platforms that are legacy, that they're not going to remove anytime soon. You know, if they're using public clouds already, they're not going to stop using them. If they're using uh, vSphere or, or some other VMware product or they're using something else, that's not going to go away either. And so OpenStack deployments are going to be in this broader context, uh, and there's really nothing that we can do about it for, you know, quite a while. Uh, it, it's going to continue to be a mixed, uh, uh, a mixed environment. In fact, I don't see that ever changing. I think it's always going to be a mixed environment to some extent. Well, we, I, go ahead. Um, I was going to say the other, the other part is you're just talking to a lot of uh, you know customers and different organizations. There's a lot of excitement around OpenStack. People are really interested in taking OpenStack and now transitioning it from these pilot projects into production workloads. But one of the consistent things that we hear back from people is that they really are worried about this management level. How do they put these controls? I mean, they have certain kinds of, let's say, data or privacy concerns or compliance concerns. Uh, we heard the gentleman from Wells Fargo talk about that. You know, but they're really concerned about that in their, their infrastructure. How do they put those controls? What we're hoping, you know, from the Red Hat perspective is by taking uh, Manage IQ, by making that now an open source project, as John Mark will talk about in a moment, it's a fairly mature product. Uh, that we're now turning into an open source project. It's got a lot of capabilities inside of it. What we are hoping is by putting that out in the community and getting it to grow, it will actually jumpstart and help accelerate uh, OpenStack adoption in the enterprise because it will add that control layer in. And we could do this uh, graphic for a lot of different platforms. We, obviously, we did it for the OpenStack uh, platform because it's the OpenStack Summit. But we could, frankly, do a, a similar graphic for lots of different platforms, uh, AWS, uh, vSphere. Uh, some other uh, virtualization or, or cloud platforms. Um, it's the same story, although there's a slightly different architecture to each, uh, but about us creating the, the piece, uh, the, the, the management layers and orchestration layers above it. So now we get to the fun stuff. The Manage IQ community. What, what, are you, what do we want to do with the Manage IQ community? Why did we make this open source and what are we trying to do with it? Um, you may have noticed that when we, when we released the announcement earlier this week, uh, we said it's coming soon. Uh, right now, it's a matter of weeks until we actually have a full-featured uh, code drop. Uh, we're going to be, uh, in the coming weeks, we will be uh, announcing some beta releases. We will be uh, giving more information about how to use Manage IQ, and then we'll have the full project release 
uh, coming up uh, again in a matter of weeks. Uh, I wish I could give you a hard date on that, but uh, not yet. Just understand it's coming soon, uh, I swear. Um, so what do we release? Well, what we're doing is we're, we're really fulfilling our promise uh, to open source manage IQ that we made when we acquired the company. Uh, we, we made the acquisition in 2012. Uh, I've actually been, I was actually right at it before then, so I'm coming to this project uh, relatively new. Uh, but it, it's something that we had the intention of doing all along. Uh, there were just a lot of things we had to do along the way to get to that point. Um, but when you do this, when, you know, this whole open source, taking a company and open sourcing its product and making it into a community project, this is part of Red DNA. It's part of our commitment to open source development, the open source way, and to community-driven innovation, which is something that we're, we're so accustomed to doing. We've been doing it since our inception you know, in the early 90s. It's, it's just something we do. And in this case, we think it's, in this particular case with Manage IQ, uh, we think it's very beneficial to the broader community, very beneficial to those who have a real need and for whom this answers a real, solves a real pain point. Um, and so we announced the name of the project, Manage IQ. Uh, that was the name of the company, and so the name lives on in the form of the, the project and the community. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Red Hat product cloud forums. Uh, in, in much the same way that Fedora is upstream to RHEL uh, and GlusterFS is the upstream to Red Hat Storage, and I guess now Ceph is also the upstream to Red Hat Storage, uh, Manage IQ is the upstream to cloud forums. And so we're, we're creating a branded uh, community around Manage IQ with its own, uh, with its own identity. Uh, and we're going in with, it's not just us. There's a whole lot of other people going with you, with us, and I'll, uh, I'll go into some detail on that. Um, but right now, if you go to manageiq.org, you'll see uh, how you can sign up for more news. Uh, we'll be releasing more information and documentation as we get closer to the release. Uh, and if you sign up, uh, you'll, be, you'll have some access to some early release betas uh, that we'll be uh, coming up with uh, fairly shortly, uh, and then in probably a couple weeks. And then uh, when we actually do launch the community, it's going to be a full featured community. It's going to be full source code. There are going to be community builds. It's going to be easy to, to use. And uh, you should be able to get to your, what I call the aha moment, uh, relatively quickly once you uh, download the community build. You should be able to understand fairly quickly what it's about and how it's useful to you. And that's really our goal, to make it simple for you and just resolve a real pain point that people face you know, every day. Um, we're going to, in Red Hat style, in the, open, in, in the open source way, we're going to develop transparently in the open. This is how we do projects. We don't just drop code over the wall. We actually, uh, we actually uh, develop in the open. We work with our communities. It's a truly a symbiotic relationship. Uh, people will be able to contribute in various ways, whether it's code contributions, whether it's extending the platform, uh, whether it's uh, documentation or helping end users. There'll be a variety of ways for you to get involved and to participate uh, in this community. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, it's something that I've been doing personally for 15 years as far as community management and community development. So this is really an exciting project for me. Uh, and we're, we're open for business. Uh, people, we already have four partners. We're looking for more. Uh, if you want to sign up, we're, we're certainly uh, look, welcome to hear from you. And it'd be, uh, it'd be great to, to, to start that uh, relationship. When you look at where this fits in the context, or in the, I guess in the history of Manage IQ, where did we start from? Uh, Manage IQ was a relatively small startup. I guess they started in 2006, 2007. And, uh, uh, they grew and they matured over time. And so I think it's important to note here that Manage IQ is not just some recent project that just started to solve a problem. It's something that you know, we've been working on for you know, almost eight years now. It's, it's a fairly mature set of code that we're bringing to the table and that we're open sourcing. It's, it's something that should be uh, pretty usable uh, to the end user. It's, it's not just, uh, you know, we're not starting from scratch here. We're, we're starting with something that's a, a pretty good product to begin with. And so when, when we acquired Manage IQ, uh, we added more resources to it, and we enlarged the picture. Um, you know, Red Hat, I think, doubled the engineering team. Uh, we added more resources to, the, uh, to, to help them uh, integrate with the rest of Red Hat services and stuff. And so it, it, it became a, a larger team, a larger community uh, within Red Hat. And now we're taking the next step, because we need to make it bigger. We need to go take it to the next level and become you know, the open source uh, cloud management platform. And so when you look at manageiq.org and what we want to do with open, by open sourcing it, we want to get more people involved. We want to provide you know, the leading cloud management platform for the industry. That's our goal, and, and you know, we're looking to do that in conjunction with you. Uh, we have to do that with you. It can't just be Red Hat. It has to be 
us and everybody else that needs to solve this problem. And so we want it to be a truly community-driven project, and that's our, that's our ultimate aim. And so I mentioned that we have four uh, founding community members or partners. Uh, I've listed them here. And when you look at Booz Allen, Booz Allen is not traditionally known as an open source uh, agent. But uh, when you look at the things that they've been able to do uh, on top of cloud forms and now with the Managed IQ community, uh, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to shock a lot of people. I think it's going to surprise you uh, to see the things that they've done. And I can't wait to talk about that in more depth uh, when we have the full project release later. Uh, Serba, you may not be familiar with, they do capacity management. So you can do capacity management with Managed IQ, uh, but what Serba fills is the ability to more easily do capacity management and to automate it. Uh, more easily. And so we're excited to have them on board because that also fills a very uh, important gap uh, in the cloud management picture. Uh, Chef, uh, most of you are probably familiar with Chef. Uh, when you think about setting policies and, uh, uh, and, and logic around the cloud governance piece, you know, configuration management and IT automation play a huge role in that. And so we're working with Chef to, uh, uh, to use Chef as a provider for configuration management services for the other services you want to deploy to help you automate the process. Uh, and so they're, they're going to be a large player in, in the development. Um, incidentally, just because I live chef here and, and no one else doesn't mean that we're not also going to be integrated with other configuration management partners, uh, but, but chef is the one that stepped up to the plate first. Uh, and then the AutoTrader Group, they're, uh, they've been a longtime customer of both uh, Manage IQ uh, and Cloud Forms, and they, they bring their, their years of expertise and familiarity and will be a tremendous help for uh, end users and people that want to get started and being uh, uh, instrumental in, in shaping the form of the community for the user. Uh, but I think the bottom line here is when we looked at who to partner with and who to go, you know, who to release with, we were looking for a diversity of members, a diversity of companies that bring their backgrounds to play and help us to address the market uh, and that are most importantly invested in the is success of the project because our success is their success. Uh, if we're successful, you know, that means they're more successful as companies and becomes this whole you know, symbiotic uh, uh, whole. Um, but but we expect this list to grow. These are just the first four. Uh, there will be many more uh, between now and the uh, project launch and probably more after that because as we grow, we're going to be looking to extending the platform and we're going to be doing that with the help of developers and end users and individuals uh, around the world. And I think as John Mark mentioned, you know, we, we really do want this community to grow. So we're hoping you know, by you guys coming to this session, you'll go out and sign up at manageiq.org. That once the bits are available in a few weeks, you'll start to take advantage of them. And we really are looking for a wide variety of partners. So you see there on that previous slide that we've got SIs in there. We've got end users. We've got ISVs. We really do want a wide variety. So we do encourage you to you know, take a look at the community and join up. And when you look at, you know, I showed on a, a previous slide uh, about the, the growth of Managed IQ from a small company to you know, a larger group within Red Hat to the, the larger community. Well, this sort of shows how we're going to market in conjunction with a variety of individuals and partners to sort of create like that fully featured cloud management platform um, so that uh, we can really make this, you know, the best open source cloud management platform uh, in the world. And so, you know, when we think of cloud management, I want you to think of a little bit of a history, the history of computing. When you look at all the major eras of computing that we've seen, there's been a sort of repeatable trend, a repeatable cycle. You know, in the Unix wars, you had a lot of companies trying to entrap customers on their specific platform, and so they created uh, little hooks to keep people tied in. And when you saw the client-server model, we saw proprietary software companies uh, creating proprietary software that basically kept people on their platform and prevented them from going somewhere else. And now with cloud computing, we're seeing kind of a similar dynamic. We're seeing uh, lots of platforms emerging that try to keep people tied to their platform, try to prevent them from moving somewhere else. And when we say your gateway to the open cloud, we really mean that. Because in our view, you should be able to choose what cloud platforms you're using and where and when. It should be according to what you need at any given time, not what your vendor tells you, not what your provider tells you. It should be your choice. And that's what Red Hat is all about and what we've always been about. And that is the driving reason for us releasing this project and making this community. Because we want to give the choice to you, because you should have uh, the ability to create your own 
open hybrid clouds. And that's something that, uh, in our minds, you know, no one else is really driving at at this point. And so that's very important to us, uh, and that's very important to me, and that's, that's why I'm involved in this project. So thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Anything you want to add? Oh, I think we have time for a few questions. Yeah. So if you do have any uh, questions, you know, feel free to step up to, to the mic. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Step up to the mic. Going once, going twice. Oh, OK. One of the questions that we've got really around sort of where you manage in different environments from a platform perspective, so VMware, uh, OpenStack, et cetera, is around um, security, auditing, logging. Is, is that a consideration in relation to Manage IQ? Does it have a component that sort of looks after that? Or? Yeah, so when you talk about security, I mean, one of the things that you can set up inside of Manage IQ or like around a lot of the policies on end users, what they're allowed to access, what resources they're allowed to consume and such. Around sort of man management tracking of change activity, provision like change management yeah. type of well, stuff. Well, provision of a VM, uh, logging from a from a, a, a log perspective, you know, access into specific environments, just sort of general things that you need to sort of consider around auditing and, 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 and security as, a, as an end to end, really. Is that something, Zab, you want to comment on? <laughs> no, so, um, I mean, there's a lot of pieces around security specifically, as far as, um, sorry. <laughs> As far as uh, you know, uh, log analysis itself. I mean, it's not we don't have that in the in the community right now, but that's an, a no, uh, normal extension, I would say, something that we can do. But we do a lot of things in terms of tracking drift, for instance, between um, you know instances. You know, what's inside, what's running, when was it running, and providing that information. So, in terms of you know what's changing in the environment, that's being tracked, and we we can actually not only track it but take re take remediation action based on that. So. The compliance piece. There's always, you know, more that can be done, but you know, there, there's that side. In terms of um, actions initiated through directly cloud uh, manage IQ, we also track that and you know clearly identify those, you know, those information. So the tenancy aspect of that is is you know well available and, and you can track this information. Um, but you know, as far as logging itself, like log tracking, such as um, Splunk, for instance, I mean, we had customers actually who have done some integration with it through cloud forms. So, and take that information, that feed, to be able to take the remediation actions. Does that answer your, your question? And, and so on a, on, a, on a broader level, you can think of the recent uh, Heartbleed example, the ability to turn off services that are running on <coughs> unpatched you know, platforms, for example, and be able to migrate to uh, platforms that are you know, patched and, and compliant. Uh, with, with recent uh, security upgrades. That, that's something that you can add to the logic and to the uh, cloud management piece. Hi. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, you will work with the, uh, the management components in the OpenStack. Uh, is that the vision, or is Managed IQ already has some work going on with Heat, Irano, Mistral, and various other orchestration? management components in OpenStack. Well, so, so one of the things that we did last year with, uh, with what the commercial product was cloud forms and now we open source as Manage IQ is we added integration points in last year between the Manage IQ uh, or cloud forms management platform into OpenStack. So as I said earlier, we're not trying to replace that, but we're already building those integration points. And what we'll do over time is Red Hat, you know, we have our own engineers that'll continue to build more integration points because we've got engineers both in the OpenStack projects and on the Manage IQ side, but then we also want to work with uh, other people inside the community to help build out those integration points as well. Thank you. Sure. Um, hi. Um, um, uh, for, for the cloud orchestra, I know there are some market uh, product already, for example, IBM already have smart cloud structure with the similar thinking, which but already been launched in the market. Uh, the user glance for image library, leverage uh, glance, leverage uh, hate for the pattern management to workflow approval, and uh, leverage uh, um, higher zone for the dashboard. So it's quite similar concept, but launched the product already. So my question is, uh, how do you differentiate with the uh, manage IQ uh, for the future or uh, with the existing market? 
I don't know right. about yep. specific competition. Mm -hmm. I know that there are a variety of cloud management platforms out there, mm -hmm. but what's really different about us, at least at this point, is that the fact that we're open source and we're going to bring hybrid cloud management to a whole new class of users that have not had the ability to do that before. Like we're, we're bringing it to uh, a much larger uh, group of people than the proprietary cloud management products can because we're free uh, and, and open source. So do you see the managed IQ as, as a future product or just a community-based? Uh, well, I mean, what do you I see? mean, today we yeah. show, we're kind of, this is kind of interesting because we're kind of going, if you would, backwards. <laughs> because we actually have the commercial product already today. So the commercial product is known as Red Hat Cloud Forms, and that's what we acquired oh, from right. the managed IQ company about a year and a half ago. Uh, our intent has always been to open source it, and now we're going through that process. It's never... You, you would be amazed at how challenging it is to actually take a proprietary product and kind of reverse engineer it to make it open source. <laughs> it takes a lot of time to pull out the libraries, the licensing, and all that kind of stuff to do it. That's what we're just a couple of weeks from, from happening. So what you'll have is Manage IQ is that upstream project that is truly open source. Anyone in the community can access it, download it, integrate with it, you know, participate inside the uh, community. And then finally, uh, you know, if someone wants to then buy a commercial supported subscription from Red Hat, that's what we commercialize into Red Hat Cloud Forms. And I, I, I think we, do we have time for one more question or are we, okay, sorry. I guess that, that'll have to be it. <laughs> thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any additional questions, John Mark, and I'd be happy to talk to you out in the hallway or whatnot, but thank you very much for coming. All right.